And let's just get this started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Amazingly, welcome to another special episode of the Get Realist Podcast. Episode 112, 112 episodes in this Dang. in this junction. Uh, my <laughs> name is Adam Chase Rennie. And I am Christine Chen. And we've got special guests today. Introduce yourselves, y'all. Hello there. I am Chuck Canzanari. And this is Lee Panessa. Lee Panessa, and we are PA Bootcamp. Boot a big chunk of it. I wouldn't say we're all of PA Bootcamp, but we're a big chunk of it. Awesome. PA Bootcamp, everyone. PA Bootcamp. Can you give us like a short pitch? What does what is PA Bootcamp? I mean, it sounds pretty self-explanatory. It's a boot camp. For you PAs. would think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> the the branding is on par. It's easy to understand. You know exactly what it is hearing it. So I wish. <laughs> truly, truly do. It is the original production assistant training program mm-hmm. for set and also office PAs when we get into art department and camera and some other PA positions. But mainly it is set PA focused. People who want to get into the industry, film and television, um, we also do discuss low budget, independent commercials, music videos, those kind of uh, programs as well. But we do try to focus more towards scripted series, which makes it easier to explain. So scripted movies and TV shows. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, why? What got? You, what inspired you guys to to start this? How? When did it start? And uh, yeah, how's it gone? Inspiration was frustration. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's kind of the birth of get realisms as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was frustration. frustration. Mm-hmm. Two thousand four. I just had enough with set PAs not knowing what they were doing, and I had enough about ads getting frustrated with set PAs not knowing what they're doing. And I said, you know what, this is getting stupid. So yes. I'm just taking matters into my own hands. Perfect. Um, real quick, if you guys. I think your background is set to blur. And And I was trying to figure out how to get rid of that. So it's on the corner. If you, if you press your, your Uh, screen, uh, yeah, it should be. Which corner? Corner of Um, of your own. I think there should be a place that says like, stop. But if, if, if you can't, I can't find it right now. I was looking, I was looking forward under preferences. Are you talking about she's blurry? Oh, okay. So, um, if you go uh, on your Zoom, uh, uh-huh. on your computer, you would go into settings. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, there me, it is. I yeah. got it. Hey. Boom! Hey. Cool. There we go. Damn. Yeah, I was looking under video, but it was under background. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, my stalkers can find. Nope. It. Now you're in. <laughs> Yes. No, it was this, it was the same thing. We started it because we were frustrated on set. Um just it, there's not really there's not really a practical place for people to learn this stuff for some reason. Um, there isn't but, the time. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I, I think people come in with the misconception that hey, like I'll just learn it on set. Sure. However, mm-hmm. you pointed out, Chuck. Uh, there isn't enough time to do that in a in a efficient way. And then what happens is that you go to you have to do it like five times in different sets if you don't get fired after your first two because you didn't know what you were doing. And then you may never even make it to your fifth one to finally learn everything. So, yeah, yeah. so that's that's cool. Did you uh, where did it originate from? Where did it start? Uh, was it in Los Angeles or? Yes. Mm-hmm. I was on a show. I don't know what show I was on, but I knew that there were going to be some PAs brought in for additionals for lockups. So I talked to the ADs ahead of time and said, can I get their contact information? And they were like, sure. Now, this is before cell phones. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cell phones hadn't existed. Oh. Yeah. So I contacted them and we all met up at a park and I said, look, I need you to just know how to use a radio. <laughs> yes. Because step one. when I have to do your job, then I have to stop my, my job. Right. And now it's causing me a problem because I can't do my job because I'm also doing yours. Mm. So I gathered them all up. I got some radios. I got some surveillance mics and I trained them on a park bench. In the middle of Van Nuys, just some random spot. There was no bathroom. There was no shade, nothing. 
but I knew I was going to get stuck working with them the next week. Yeah. And I thought, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. To lay out the standards on them. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Okay. That's how it started. That's cool. How, that. how long ago was this? 2000, 2000. Yeah. Mm. Cause it's before I even came into the 2000. picture. Wow. So 23 years ago. Wow. What do you think has changed since then in terms of like how sets are uh, from when you started to now? I know that's a pretty weighted question. So as I say, we find that it's constantly changing. We become aware of that because our program is always evolving to incorporate. I mean, it's like when I started in the industry, things were still mostly shot on film. Mm-hmm. And now it's a rarity if you're working on anything that's shot on film. Uh, of course, recently there was uh, the COVID protocols that came into place so that we could continue working. And now we're dealing with different productions and different companies uh, lifting those protocols at different rates. Uh, some are still very strict with the protocols and some it's almost like the, the pandemic's completely passed over at this point. Yeah. And then digital. Yes. Yeah, the digital the paperwork. Some um, people do both. Some we've seen them. Digital, some people don't. Yeah, rumor about unionizing PAs, which is funny. Uh, I, we went through the era where they were going to get rid of PAs entirely and just replace oh. them with additional ADs, ADs. until they realized ADs yeah. were not going to take lockups. But the ADs won't do the jobs that the PAs do. Yeah. Oh, no. When was it that they were going to um, just get rid of PA? <laughs> Mid two thousands, I think, is where we were. Holy shit! Yeah, there was a time. Yeah, there was a time where set PAs were not permitted. Mm. So the heads of the guild will come to set, and the PAs had to hide. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, this is true. This is true stuff. The all the PAs had to hide, and the only faces that could be seen were the ADs. Oh my gosh. The second had to come out of the trailer in the middle of their prelim uh-huh. and make themselves visible. And the only faces that the guild would see would be the ADs. All the CPAs hid. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's real stuff. Because I was one hiding. So I knew. Yeah. <laughs> there was also the time when uh, driving around cast would be done by production assistants before transportation closed that loophole up. So now it's only done by people in the transportation union, but it used to be not really a set PA job. You would be known as a cast driver, but it would Mm -hmm. be a job that would be done by people with set PA experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's still, there's still places that get away with it. um, If they're not, if they're not union or they're Mm -hmm. in a right to work state. So, yeah. Or if the actor wants a personal friend of theirs or a relative of theirs to drive them because they would just drive themselves otherwise. Yeah. The position of background coordinator is also gone. That was, that was an actual job background coordinator. And now that is also gone because the ADs don't want the set PAs touching any of the paperwork. Well, you've watched uh, vouchers go from paper to digital. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of 50, 50. But yeah. yeah, she's learned digital vouchers for background. Yeah, I've seen. There's been a lot of changes. Yeah, that's. I bet. I mean, yeah, goes. and the, and and I mean, you bring up a valid point. The thing is that this is an industry that continues to change live mm-hmm. all the time, um, and there's just no. If there's if people aren't keeping up with what the changes are, then people come on set and they don't know what they're doing, and we're back to square one. And so it's great to have a program like PA Pugamp that kind of outlines what is currently happening in the industry. Um, do you guys still work in the industry these days, or um, yeah? Well, yeah. For for this very reason, it's important that we still work on set. Uh, I day play bouncing between three to four different shows which is how i've noticed like the covid protocols the differences between them and the difference in the the way they've been lifted for us for craft service for catering to to see what other changes are made with the industry he does mostly series i will continue to day play into i am the world's oldest set pa (laughs) and i will day play until i am unable to walk (laughs) Spoken awesome. like a true set rat. 
Yeah. yeah. I've gone I've gone from New Balance to Hoka footwear. And it's uh, prolonged my lifespan considerably. Right. <laughs> yeah, he okay. does mostly series. I do mostly features. Okay. Gotcha. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do streaming, but like now I never did the network stuff. He did the yeah. network stuff. And I didn't do streaming until the features and the streaming sort of went into that gray area. Mm -hmm. But I was yeah. always features. What is the difference? I mean, obviously the length of time and stuff like that, but um, page count. It, yeah, page count, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, why have you wanted to stick with features and not go to series or vice versa um, for you? I love features. Yeah. Because I love features. It's just easier. There's a lot less time constraint and we're mm -hmm. doing a page a day, maybe two series. I would look at the series call sheet and they'd be doing like eight pages a day. And I'm thinking to myself, what time do people have to get up? <laughs> because even though the crew call for us is just as early, we're focused on one page, two max. Mm -hmm. And then if we have time, we'll get something. So it just seemed a little <laughs> less chaotic yeah. than series did. But now that streaming has sort of folded into that, it's the, the chaos is there. <laughs> is there yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just the, the demand for higher quality production values on TV shows that sort of TV quality isn't accepted as much as it used to be. They want, I think since the West Wing, actually, people were like, oh, you can have something that looks like this on a TV budget? Well, we want that all the time. And of course, HBO shows, though right. their, their TV shows uh, take a lot longer to make per episode than regular streaming or network television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We would have stunts and we would have second unit, we would have splinter units and they wouldn't series wouldn't yeah but now we have it all the time yeah yeah mm. so where have you teached or taught sorry teached where have you taught um around is it just the u.s or have you been able to go um, <laughs> well? we we have been to united kingdom we, we have been global girl yeah we have been to both coasts of ireland and we have been to wales mm -hmm. then we have also been to madrid Last year, about this time, we were in Madrid, Spain. And then a month after Madrid, we went to Greece. That's mm. so cool. What's For the biggest difference weeks. between like how things are run here in the U.S. and how things are, are run internationally? Uh, your jaw is going to drop on this. Okay. 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 In the U.K., you stopped for tea time. What? Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. No. Yeah. You just stop. That's crazy. Meaning you just yeah. stop. <laughs> tea time. Yeah, here it'd be like hot tea at Crafty and then grab it if you can. But over there, right. they just, just stop. They just stop completely you for stop. a break. That's it's like awesome. Americans trying to stop for like a smoke break. You know, it's just like yeah. that's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. you just stop. When that's you crazy. feel that it's, that's necessary, you just stop. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Look at Chris being spaced. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean stop? Stop what? You mean some of us stop? It's like, no, 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 no. You just right. stop. <laughs> She's trying to process. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? How is it built in? How does it work? It's built in in the day. Okay. And it happens twice. The cart shows up twice? with the, with Wait, the giant I didn't know vat that. of tea. Wow. Twice. twice. Man, I'm going to go in the, go to the UK work. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> There's a reason why Pinewood Studios in the UK never has a stage space that cools down. It's Everybody constant. Wants tea time. Tea Everybody time. wants Twice. Tea time. Twice. Dude. Twice. Oh my gosh. Now that's Ireland. That's UK all across. That's Scotland. That's Wales. That's London. All of it. Do they, do they serve like actual scones and... Tea yeah. and yes, yeah. tea and cake. Oh my god, they have tea and they have yeah. cake for Christine. And that's tiny an AD sandwiches. Nightmare. Oh my right, god, right, 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 yeah, tiny sandwiches with the crusts cut off. Oh my god, 
No, this I is real. Go. <laughs> this is real. I, this is amazing. Now, in Budapest, okay, they also stop. Okay. For a whole meal. Meaning, oh, this is there, there's an actual legit like there's an actual legitimate on a tray food comes around, but you're not shooting and you're not sitting down for lunch. Oh. Food comes around and you can help yourself. This is in wow. Budapest. Interesting. And you just stop again. Wow. But how but do they what's their end time? Is it still is it still 12 or yes the okay. goal is 12 14 most okay yeah so you're still looking at a 12 14 okay but there are two stops in the day in the uk budapest has one stop but it's this massive smorgasbord of anything that you want mm. that's and amazing. that's not even lunch break <laughs> wait in addition with the lunch break oh yeah. oh yeah so they got two tea times which is like what roughly 10 15 minutes yeah yeah mm. 15, and then 15 an hour each. lunch. Yeah, I'm gonna go bother wow. my UK friend and be like, this "I is would." Or... <laughs> it's just it feels I so would. substantial. An hour and a half out of your call time or your call, like your day, your shoot day. It just <laughs> it feels so. I don't know. Like it feels like an '80s nightmare. <laughs> well, it feels it feels illegal. Yeah, yeah, it does kind of. It feels like there's something <laughs> law breaking. You did or something rules, bad. Yeah. <laughs> something bad. There's something uh, there's something suspicious connected to it. <laughs> oh yeah. That's interesting. We are global. Mm. We are global. So y'all are international. I love it. That's nuts. Um, when was the first time that you went international in which which country? Ireland. Ireland. And Ireland this was before first. the pandemic. Yeah, this was during pandemic. No, it was before the pandemic. Not before pandemic. It was like the year before the pandemic. Ireland school. We yeah, we did Ireland and we did two back to back. There was a show out there called Night Flyers mm -hmm. that was getting mm -hmm. ready to go into production. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, they had us do it, boot camp takes a lot of energy. Yeah, we like to mm. put out a lot of energy. We like to keep the whole weekend energized. I mean, people are giving up their weekend and they're there for eight hours a day. So you certainly don't want us to sit there going anyway, we, you know, that kind of droning voice. Right. So you want to give out a lot of energy. So we yeah, did sure. we did the boot camp, uh, two day boot camp. And then the second day ended and we literally are setting up the room to do day one all over again the next day. So it was four days back to back of the boot camp, and once that was done, we were able to sleep for a long time. Yeah, yeah, and I can attest to it. I went and sat in on an APA boot camp, and it is a lot of energy, and it's perfect. It's great. It's it makes the whole experience fun, and as fun as it can be, and it is it feels like you're at a boot camp, and it's like um, they have games between different. Uh, teams on on terms there's ways to how to set up your walkie all the lovely things that 80s wish pas just magically showed up knowing this stuff but uh it's few and far between so i have to say christine now i did start this thing on behalf of you guys it uh, wasn't the set PA, yeah yeah i kept getting because when i went to set all i wanted to do was help the 80s that's all i wanted yeah. to do so whoever was in a prelim and they couldn't leave the trailer and they needed something from craft service because they couldn't leave the trailer, I wanted to help them. Yeah. And then I would see the second second going off on Splinter Unit, but no one would be able to organize first team who was getting these interviews for EPKs. I just wanted to help. Yeah. So my heart was always, <laughs> I want to make your job easier, the ADs, because I know what you guys are doing. And I know what chaos your mindset is in. I just want to make it less. I just wanted to make it less. That's why I started. Yeah. But then when I noticed that that's not why set PAs were taking these jobs, I was like, okay, the training isn't necessarily for the set PAs. Mm. It's for the ADs. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. As offensive as it might sound to no, people who are trying makes, to break this in. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Right. I'm not training them for them. I'm training them so the ADs can have it easier. Yeah. That's I mean, that, to that other, makes, 
Sorry. Go ahead. Go and ahead, other departments. Yes. And other yeah. departments. Mm. Yes. Gotcha. Because yeah. we train art department PA. We right. train office PA. We train camera PA. Yep. Now, as you guys know, not every department has PAs. Correct. Mm. Yeah. So we only train for the departments that we know have PAs. Right. Yeah. But the basics of what they learn can be applied to any department. To any department. Virtually yeah. any, yeah. Yeah. Call sheets, any department. Radios, any department. Mm-hmm. Surveillance yeah. mics, any department. That's great. Even the picture yeah. car captain sometimes has a surveillance mic if they're on set placing the cars. Yeah. It's great because like I feel like the industry is very much a like, oh, it'll just figure itself out, basically. <laughs> That's always works well. And the <laughs> the thing is they've been able to rely on that because there are people like us um, who are proactive about putting order in stuff because we want our lives to be slightly easier and not harder. And so then we do it and they're like, yeah, see, it worked itself out. And we're like, yeah, well, we, because we were willing to put in our Mm -hmm. time so that it would make our life easier. And I, you know, we can end our days and I don't want to kill somebody. So yeah, it's, it's just <laughs> yeah. exactly what it, it is. It didn't work itself out. Yeah. We worked it out it for you. Out. Yeah, for you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so uh, that it, it's so interesting. I mean, uh, I'm, I go back and I think about, man, so much of this stuff can just easily be, you know, people can come on set already knowing a lot of this stuff. If there was just a place you know, some resources that just outline, because it's not rocket science. That's the thing. And I understand that's why producers are like, yeah, so it'll work itself out because it's not rocket science. Sure. But like, we're the working it out, dude. Yeah. (laughs) And also it's like, all right, you're by the second week of the show. And it's like, oh, we have one more week. I'm glad you finally figured it out. Yeah. (laughs) Show's almost over. So now that we've broken you in, you'll be ready for the next one. So happy for you. Hmm. Right. Not well, helpful. Yeah. No. Not helpful for us. Yeah. We're the ones who suffer. You're absolutely right. The 80s and yeah, the other. That's why. Yeah. So, I mean, as as harsh as it might sound to set PAs who are thinking, well, geez, why isn't anybody out there helping us? It's like we are. But you have to understand that the reason you're there is to make the AD's job easier to begin with. So yeah. why not know something going in? It's the sink or swim policy. Yep. Yeah. The sink or swim has been around since Chaplin. You know, yeah, they think to themselves, you either catch on or you don't. And that's how you decide whether or not you're going to survive in this industry. Right. Right. Because it, it's it's so it's so much harder to constantly work backwards and work against time to help out the PAs. And then they come in and not understand a, a thing, which is fine. Nobody should know everything. Right. But like when you are trying to like you said, be at the at the at the behest of 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 the production, especially the ads. You want to be there for them, and you want to be pro as useful as possibly can. You're being completely counteractive if you are being like, well, I mean, I need help too. It's like, well, you're kind of, you're you're working against the entire system. You're not understanding how much <laughs> you, you don't get you it. Don't need. Yeah, you don't need help. You need to listen. Mm. and that's the help you'll get listening listen Listen. yeah if you stop talking and you listen more you'll be getting a whole lot more help than you understand because if you listen to the radio you can figure out 90 percent of what's going on what's going on exactly listen but you have to listen yep yeah and the truth is helping christine's a first right Yep. She has to bring on her second, her second, second. Her second has to bring on her second. She's got to get a team, mm-hmm. right? So she has to have that team so well interlocked that she doesn't worry about the set PAs mm. in hopes yeah. that the set PAs who get there can be just as strong. Yeah. Well, what if we stopped all that? Yeah. What if that just stopped? What if she knew that not only can she trust the ADs, but she can also trust her sub mm-hmm. without second thinking. That would be a great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Makes you the shoot days the, go by. Yeah. Yeah. This is how I'm, this is how I came up with this whole process was thinking in the way of 
What does she need right here, right now? What does Christine need to go and get all her attention and all her focus to the director and not have to think about whether or not the prelims getting run, done, yeah. whether or not base camps being run. Yeah. All her focus can be shifted to the director. That's what I'm trying to give them by training these guys. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And, and it's, it's stuff that if you are, it's one of those, it's like, if you're not in the industry, you don't know if you're brand new to the industry, you have no clue. And you, you, you think you go to film school and you know, some, there are some programs that are um, better about this. Um, some few and far between. Uh, and, and yeah, so you, you get on the set and you will quickly realize that, oh shit, I'm lost. And uh, I have to get what I need to do what. And then, and then what, the problem with most people when they're under duress is that they just stop. They hide. <laughs> they, yeah. They take their own yeah. tea, tea time. Yeah. The, the, the instinct is to hide, hide, to be as far away from the action yeah. as possible, to hope yeah. you don't get called on to do something Correct. and just make it to the end without incident because yeah there's no responsibility, but that's not useful to the show. Right. Yeah. So now we have a PA out there hiding who is supposed to bring bringing sound sides to the mixer or is supposed to be bringing second team into color cover. If you've only got two set PAs and one is hiding, <laughs> the other person's lifting everything. 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 Yeah. This isn't a useful PA. This is a useless PA. And yeah. they're going to get paid at the end of the day. And they get paid. Yeah. And you're giving them money for this. Uh, one of our guests said, wow, PA boot camp store. I attended it back in the day, like 2005 or something. That's good. Yeah. It's definitely so it's, it's alive and kicking. And and I got to meet new, new students uh, at the last mm -hmm. LA event. And uh, I hope it keeps going for i feel i honestly just hope that it becomes like a staple type thing like um, well i was about to say like the idea of pa boot camp is probably gonna like at some point gonna be a bigger thing than y'all you know what i mean like it's supposed to be like well, a go ahead go ahead no one of the smartest things that she did was uh once she created pa boot camp and it was working she trademarked the name mm. she, she put a copyright on all the paperwork. very smart very because sweet. there are other Copycats. production assistant training programs out there now. I mean, mm -hmm. there were some before us as well, stuff like Streetlights and Made in New York. So there were some other programs, but it's not like this. The thing about Lee's program is that it combines this, uh, the paperwork and the responsibilities and the job stuff with the mindset that you need to have in order to interact with 150 people and nobody's getting enough sleep. And you need to keep going to get to the end of this show without tripping up so bad that they have to replace you with someone else. So all of that gets worked into her program and into what it is that we train it and why we train it in a boot camp style. Mm -hmm. So now there's other production assistant training programs out there, but if they do PA boot camp, we have. Uh, yeah, we have legal recourse. We actually have people that, that send them stuff. And it's like, look, you can't do that. I yes. knew this was going to happen. Yeah. I knew yeah. this was going to happen. Yeah. The thing is, is that I'm not coming from film school. Now, right. yes, film school is an investment. I don't want I anyone. I didn't come from film school either. <laughs> okay. I don't want anybody to be knocking film school. He went yeah, to yeah. film school. Okay. It's okay. Yes. It's okay. Understand, though, it's film theory. Yes, that's exactly what 100%. I told people. It's yeah. theory. It's not practical it's not, knowledge. Yeah, no. This is not physical production. When we go in from prep, we go into, it's called physical production. Mm -hmm. That is not film school. Correct. Christine talked about that in an episode a long time ago. It's like, there's yeah. nothing practical you learn as uh, other than theory. You know, it's just, there's no practicality with it. Yeah. No, and we don't want to knock it because people are spending, you know, 50 grand on Tish. But well, but, we can. <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get to set, is any of that useful? And the answer is no. No. Right. No, you're right. You're right. It's not. It's, it's sure not like soft, 
No, you know, you yeah. can't sugarcoat it. It's just not. The truth not. is, is it useful? The answer is no. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not. Uh, yeah, I think about it. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, because it, what it is teaching you is in theory, if you had the best scenarios, if you had the had the 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 best case lights, all this this is how you can do certain things. The problem is you very rare that's one percent of productions. Is that barely scratches the surface barely, you know? barely yeah yeah you know somebody the- asked um on instagram do you know around when the first pa boot camp of 2024 will be do you guys mm. know well first of all can i just i'm flattered Hold on. <laughs> just can I take a second Ooh, i'm getting a little flattered here and y'all so- are wearing the shirts too represent that yeah, merch represent Good. we love representing merch christine's <laughs> doing it right now <laughs> we got realism. let's go yeah. Now, on the back of our shirts shows all the city, state, country that we've trained. I was going to say I wouldn't try to to turn, but no, yeah. don't and don't turn. But that's awesome, really. Turn, but we're running out of room. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going international. You guys are are, are you guys are going to be PA Boot Camp Incorporated at, at some point? You know, <laughs> it's crazy. Shirt. That's awesome. Do you, yeah. Do you so, know when the next next one will be? So our our general, you said about twenty twenty four. Yeah. yeah. Our general schedule is we aim to hold it on the third weekend of every month. Nice. Okay. You're we, third so, weekend of every so month. you look for that. We end up adjusting based on holidays. Um, I think once we were we did it, it turned out to be a Super Bowl weekend. That was a mistake. <laughs> but you know, try to get away from Father's Day and, oh, and yeah. St. Patrick's Day weekend. Um, we did that once and we had people who had their heads on the table because they were nursing a hangover. But that's our goal. So we aim for the third weekend of every month. Sometimes uh, we're unable to do it because of that. Sometimes we, because we're traveling as well, the, we try to give travel camps as many weekend options as possible. Mm -hmm. And so they'll choose the third weekend and then we'll just do the local camp on, on the weekend before the weekend after. Yeah. Mm. It's always a weekend, right? It's always two days. It's always two days and it's always a weekend. Uh, Usually it is not in December because of Christmas. Yeah, it just people are people are too busy to attend, and our numbers have been historically low. If we do one in December, we can't do it during the week because there's also the career changers, mm-hmm. the ones that are thinking to themselves, "Okay, I've done this job, and I've sacked in this money, and I'm thinking about a career change in film, or I'm thinking about a career change from where I am in film to a different place in film." Mm-hmm. So we want those people to still be able to make their Monday through Friday paycheck. Yeah. Right. And then to be able to come to us on a weekend. And by the time they go that back to their sense. regular job on Monday, right. they might be like, eh, mate, this isn't what I had in mind. Yeah. So we don't stop anybody who has a regular job, a job. and have and have it on a weekday. Because you kind of need one when you're in LA to survive. <laughs> yeah. To pay yeah. rent. Pay it's rent. A little expensive. It's, it's a little expensive, little expensive here. Yeah. 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 Expensive and gas and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And it's getting worse. It's getting expensive here in Austin worse. too. So, I mean, yeah. you know, uh, you got to You got to hustle where you got to hustle, you know? Yeah. yeah. So we have to do it on the weekend. Do mm-hmm. you have a boot camp Makes in sense. Austin? We did. We were in San Antonio. We were in San Antonio. No, we were in San Antonio. I've wanted to get to Austin because I hear the food is delicious. It is. Oh, it is. Yes. It is. But we've well, only made it as well, close to San Antonio. We sidebar on this, but I'll help you guys get something. If there's if there's a way to get you guys in Austin, I'll... they have to want us. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. They. I'm yeah. sure they will. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 A, a lot of sometimes when we travel, people think, "Oh, we're just coming out with a bunch of paperwork and folders," or we just come out with the like one sheet and we go to Staples the day before and make 30 copies of everything. But because of those activities that you've seen, because of the, yeah, the camp stuff that we put into it, we actually have quite a bit of, we have like a hundred pounds of boot camp. We're talking like four Pelican cases. Okay. (laughs) Because we don't want to, when we travel, we don't want to give them half a boot camp. We want to give them the full program that we give out here in los angeles sure so we have these these giant plastic pelican cases that we pack with all of the equipment and activity material that we use for for the boot camps that we do here so you get them out there as well yeah no that's great um no we can sidebar about that because uh texas needs it that's for sure 
we, yeah. we are open to it for Texas. sure. Yeah, I love Texas. Yeah. Um, for what I understand, there's some places within the state of Texas that has their own training. I don't know what it involves or entails. Really? Mm. I don't right? know that. Yeah. But again, it's not know. it's not us. But it's not us. It's right. not PA boot camp. That's it's right. Not PA boot camp. But I and I'm not like tooting like when I went in and was able to sit in and kind of participate in everything. I was just really impressed by the stuff that was, you know, the structure of it, what you guys were teaching, um, the different terms uh, and how interactive it is. And I think that's the, the interactive part is something that is extremely important because that's how a film environment is. It is about teamwork. So you know, learning a lot of this stuff by yourself in your room, you know, reading about it and stuff, it's just not going to be the same as, you know, interacting with your, with your, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I have, because there was virtual moments, people were doing virtual training. Oh yeah. Here's my question Mm. because I get very confused. Maybe someone needs to teach me a few things. How do you virtually Educate someone on how to properly use a radio, change out a battery, change the channels, and then a surveillance mic, transmit, receive, and troubleshooting. Right. So I need to know how you do that virtually, and I need to know how you do it by textbook. Right. Yeah. It seems a little a little rhetorical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's a tough one. You can't. Simple, also, simple oh- as. Over the years, we've uh, expanded out so much. We, we we develop new activities and we get rid of old activities. And there was a time when we were training in New Orleans and Baton Rouge quite a while, and they asked us to put together a three-day program. So we had so many of these wow. other things that it was actually easy for us to come up with. It's, when she started, it was only 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Saturday, Sunday. And now it's Nine to five, we're usually we usually go long, usually goes to like 530 when we do it. But because of the three day program, we have all of these other activities in our back pocket. So if we see, oh, we need to spend more time on gear, we need to spend more time so that they understand what an exhibit G looks like, you know, the other kinds of unusual papers you find in paperwork. We have that as well. So it's. It's a 16 hour course, but part of what we have as our engine to help keep it intense is that we easily have 24 to 30 hours of material that we could go over if we had the time. Yeah. So that that gets us to press it all down and and get it down to the, the heart. So we're giving them a bunch of paperwork too. So if they're not getting it right off the bat, they have stuff to take home, they can learn on their own. But Fantastic. we're yeah. we're hitting them with something, and then we're moving on to the next activity like yeah. easily within an hour. And, and the thing is, like this is designed by people who are in the industry who and know what is useful to our jobs. Like one of the graduation gifts that you showed me, where it looked like the sides, was brilliant. But only if you're in the industry will you know that. That's the thing. And so like, I don't understand how people can create classes when they aren't working individuals in the industry, because like, like you guys said, the rules change all the time and we're designing it in a way that we wish we had when we were going through the process of learning it by ourselves and sinking or swimming, you know, by ourselves, just, we're just putting structure to it. That's all. Yeah. And in a easy to digest way that, that we wish we had that was yeah. that, that was yeah. the whole that's yeah. why i loved about um coming to bapa boot camp and stuff like that was it is that fundamental of like we're just passionate people about what we do and we're just wanting to make sure that people come in with the skills that we wish we had <laughs> we have to have properly with some structure that doesn't exist but we're going to make it exist cuz we give a shit about our industry yeah. And because we do, like we are putting in that time to create the. the and system. without it, we will fall yeah. back and yeah. we will have problems from the networks and we will have problems with the studios and we will have problems with the UPMs. So without it, there is a ripple effect of negativity. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to be a problem down the line at some point. Yeah. If we can no, stop it from being a problem. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Is that, why not? No, it's, yeah. it's, it's, um, 
why not it's stop fantastic. it from being a problem? Yeah. Uh, somebody said that they're looking to attend the LA boot camp of 2024 because they're moving from Ohio next year. So if you okay. have any ideas, we'll be around. Be, yeah. Like I said, we aim for the third weekend, but we'll, we'll definitely be around. There will definitely be boot camps in 2024. Um, can't lock in a stage yet. Way too early, though. Yeah. It yeah. seems lately it's, we're it's almost... like a film set, guys. That's what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. literally Sorry. film. Yeah, it is yeah. literally film in a it's training like a set. Yeah. format. Yeah. yeah. So the, true the San Fernando, yeah. the San yeah. Fernando Valley area seems to be our regular home lately. Yeah. So I don't imagine mm -hmm. we're going to be like down in Cerritos or Anaheim. But everything that we've but, done, everything from A to Z, it's all production. When you get in the room, there's catering chairs catering tables duvetine on the tables they're not tablecloths mm -hmm. it's duvy i stole it from grips yeah yeah. It's got yeah shit and then i <laughs> put it in the room i stole my ad kits i stole my files yeah. i just mm -hmm. went to shows i cleaned out the trash you know we've also had some donations i do i have a lot of donations I, I to <laughs> you're not just <laughs> robbing them i wanted to mention sandbags and i'm like they're never going to let me on set again if they think i'm stealing yeah, this yeah, stuff we have some donations but uh -huh. when, it's the authenticity mm. yeah. is what we try to bring because you right. can't be trained on set. It's a hazard, number one. Mm. And number two, if you're trained on set, then you're stopping someone else from doing their job. Yeah. So that becomes a thing. Now, Christine, I don't mean to step on toes, but I am going to tell you something that happened once. Oh, okay. We were in, I think, Louisiana. Okay. And... They were so happy with what they got. There was a show coming in mm. and they knew full well that the ADs would be third area, but they would be killed. Yeah. We were asked to train second seconds. Yeah. Mm. And we yeah. did. Mm -hmm. We trained second seconds and we trained seconds because, you know, sometimes... Yes. They're seen as equal, and then they're seen depending by the show. Right. But we also trained ADs from the That's frame phenomenal. of mind of, of the first. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like, it's this is <laughs> very, this is, you're not stepping on anyone used toes. I think. No, I was, I was about to say, I worked with ADs who might Should need some <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's not mean? that I'm against the program. Except that once you're done understanding the paperwork, it would be really good if you understand what's happening on set. Yeah, totally. <laughs> one one of our great uh, whales that we've never been able to land is there were discussions with the ADs in the DGA trainee program yeah. to incorporate PA boot camp. It's been a long term goal of ours that before they even start any anything on set that yeah. they attend PA boot camp. And we we had advocates in the DGA that were also pushing for this, but ultimately whatever conversations they have internally, they just never decided to pull the trigger on it. But we always Why thought it would be great. Is, uh, is I, I don't want to, I don't want to speculate. Okay. I do know that yeah. we've had encounters with other higher end with producers and studios who do have a problem with the boot camp style. Oh. who have a problem with the fact that we they they want you to present that that film production and tv production is all happiness and sunshine and that we're all here to be friends <laughs> and it's all a positive activity oh no it gets better but they wanted quote this is a quote from the producer from a show that we were training for that got shelved quote a supportive environment mm hmm and so you understand mm -hmm. where they're coming from. And certainly in any sort of legality way, you understand that this is what they hope to achieve. Just like how we talk about when when shows incorporate a no assholes policy, right. usually when that policy goes away, it goes away at the top by the very people who were hoping to you know, be, yeah. because they're under the pressure of time wow. and money. Right. And in the end, they ultimately need to get the shots they need to get in order to make the scene amazing more than they need to worry if they're stepping on toes. Yeah, and I would argue that a supportive community is only 
possible if the people within it have the tools to be able to support each other. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah. like we say, we don't need to train people for the nice shows, the getting along on the nice shows, which there are, which there are out there. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying they don't exist. We're saying that you don't need PA boot camp for that. But the more common shows, there's going to be days where we're going to fall behind schedule and there's going to be pressure and there's going to be anxiety and it is going to go downhill when PAs are on the bottom of that hill. Yeah. And we need to prepare you for that so yeah. that you don't crack, so that you don't do or say something that makes them not want to bring you back onto the show. I agree hundred percent. Yeah. Not to mention how many personalities we're dealing with. We were talking about that earlier. I, I've talked yeah. about this so much on, on um, a past podcast is that it's how people deal with stress and the, that's mm. the biggest thing that's when the breakdown is it's 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 what makes a good ad and what it sometimes it's just the ability to be able to pause and process that stress in a way that is more receptive that somebody is able to receive it in a more positive way that and it takes more time to do that and the problem is when you're under pressure and all that stuff, it sometimes doesn't behoove the AD to do that. It's easier to be an asshole. It's easier to, to not explain why I need this or why you need to do it this way. It's easier to be like, fucking do it this way. Like, go, why are you asking questions? You know, type yeah. of thing. And so the greatest gift you yeah. can give to anybody in production is the gift of time. Yeah. Time. The gift of time is the greatest gift you can give. And that's exactly what we don't have. Yeah, on set. And we never get enough of it. Right. And we never utilize it as fast as we can other than just get this to set. Just get this to set. It's like, okay, but where am I going to just get it to set? And you're like, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you're dealing with a crew of over 100 people, okay? Yeah. So let's just say that 50% of them are supportive and film passionate and go get them, kid slap on the back but what about the other 50 mm -hmm. so now what you're only going to hang out with the 50 that are nice to you but the other 50 are also going to give you things to do and you're not going to know how to handle their personalities right what's the plan right mm -hmm. because assholes exist <laughs> yeah everywhere yeah assholes. you can't yeah. not have an asshole on the show yeah. fine your ad's aren't assholes okay great Find your grips aren't assholes. Okay, great. Electric, transpo, hair, makeup, props, yeah. visual effects, special effects, and Actors. on and on we go. Yeah. Oh, talent. Don't even get me started. Talent. <laughs> yes. Background. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You know, cast, <laughs> cast and background, first team and second team. What about them? Yeah. Mm. The stunt puppies. What about them? Yeah. So, right. This is a lot of personalities and a lot of juggling. Yep. And Which you, is, if you don't have your basics. Yeah, exactly. You crack. Yeah. And again, yeah. we're not saying they're all a bunch of jerks. We're just saying within that many people, there's a jerk or two in there. You're going to find them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're everywhere. And they're not that way, maybe outside of work. Correct. Yeah. Sure. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's just a, in the, it's the, being able to process stress in a constructive way is not easy to do. And, yeah. and the prelim still pressure. has to get out by lunch. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is crazy to think that the DGA wouldn't see this as a prime opportunity to, to know that like, Hey, maybe, maybe this can work because I don't want my PA to come in and not know shit for shit. They only yeah. want ADs. Yeah, that's that's a crazy they it's a crazy notion to me. They only want ads. They only want ads. Very interesting. Because everybody needs have... Superman, right? Yeah. <laughs> they only want ads. Right. And and the way that I know this for a fact is because I was there. I was there at the times where over the radio, my ad said, "Hide, hide, hide, guys! All my pas, all my pas, hide." over the radio so and where I was hiding behind the camera truck on a feature shooting on a back lot the size of 14 football fields so we're talking a big scripted large budgeted feature and I was hiding behind a camera truck waiting for my AD to tell me that I can come out 
That is nuts. <laughs> and I watched. Oh. I kept my I kept my mouth shut and I kept my ears open and I hid behind the gate of the camera truck and I watched as all of a sudden all the additionals came from their deep queuing of the background closer to camera. And I watched the second come out of the trailer and get to camera and they stopped their prelim. I was watching this and I thought to myself, wow. this is crazy. Yeah. I know. I know. So weird. So it was so weird. And I remember exactly what was said. I know who said it. I know how many additionals we had that day. I know I watched the AD come out of the trailer and I'm like, so there goes the prelim. And right. I actually said that to another CPA. I went that prelim and getting out now. Of course not. Yeah. You're stuck. Because you just stopped the second AD from yeah. doing their prelim because you took them out of the trailer so their face could be seen. I mean, again, it, it seems like it's such an essential part of of set, especially PAs, because that's the whole it's the whole point is is for them to take off more work for the AD. I mean, y'all said it yourself. So to have why that not? offloaded work, why not have why not? all of that? What is the deal? I Plus mean, the whole ad- thinking. The whole advantage for the PA is the entry level non union position that exposes you to what all of the other departments are doing right. so that you can go, Oh, I want to be there. I didn't know what a grip was when I stepped on set and now yeah. I want to be a grip. You exactly. window shop. I tell them, I tell them that when they're there, they're window shopping. Yep. Ooh, props looks nice. Ooh, camera looks okay. Oh, I like art, but you won't know that if you don't get to set. How are you um, supposed to know that if you don't even get to set? You can get in the production office, but how do you physically right, see what they see do right. yeah. when you're in principal photo? Yep. Yeah. You you Somebody's won't. Somebody's asking what we're you talking won't. about. We're, we're talking about on um, PA Bootcamp, who is a fantastic resource for anybody who is trying to get into the film industry and should be a staple to um, first time filmmakers who are trying to get into the film industry because it gives you the step-by-step practical knowledge of how to survive on set really um and not only to survive but really to make your ads and everybody that you're working with their lives easier which will make you more hireable because we like hiring people who make our lives easy because easier because our lives are already not so much so <laughs> if, you, if you survive i'll say this to anybody who's listening or watching okay if you survive you will thrive but you have to get past that first day yeah mm. and the ad's want people who will support them not yeah. pas who need support correct oh, i love that yes exactly is so, and I I think I've said this on the previous uh, podcast before. I can pick out within five to ten minutes of being on set who I can trust, who I can't trust, <laughs> and who I'm going to ask, and who. And I always, you know, at the end, I always apologize to the ones that I um, rely on heavily. I'm like, you know, I call on you all the time because like, I, I know you have my back. Like, I know you have my back. And yeah. because of that, like, I I will have your back when I yeah. you're going to be part of my team if I, if I can. I can't call on the other one because I yeah. know it won't get done. Yeah. And that's what you want. You, you want to make sure that you, the if you, you call for something once and that's, and it gets done. You don't want to ch- have to check in all the time and be like, wait, you told me this way. Why is this not done? Or like, not to mention, yeah. ADs, you guys might not even remember that it was supposed to get done. Yeah. The only way that you remember that it gets not gets done is when someone yells at you about why it didn't get done. And you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I had no, wait a minute. It did. What do you mean? It didn't get done. Mm. And now you're like, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I'm, now I'm angry. Yeah. yeah. Cause I didn't know that it didn't get done until my, UPM or my producer or my director brought it to my attention. Right. Now I'm mad. Now I'm mad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know. Man, we got to, we need to go sidebar as well and figure out how we can make PA boot camp 
a bigger thing or somehow i don't know we'll get we'll have to figure out because i i loved being at your boot camp i thought it was i learned stuff you know i just i exactly oh we're always learning but like i i go in and and i just love the structure of it everything that was being taught was extremely pertinent and just things that i wish i known when i first got in uh we're cut from the same cloth where people who, you know, figured it, figured this out ourselves and realized that there was a disconnect in the industry and the need and are utilizing our time to, because we, for the love of our jobs, of our, in, of our industry to want to make it a smoother place for, at least for our sakes too, you know? <laughs> So it's for selfish reasons. As if well. it helps we, us, it's yeah. probably going to help helping. more sets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. Um, that's and that's, that's why I say to you that we're not training for them. Yeah, we're training for the first, the second, the second, second, the additional second. Whoever has to take over second unit, whoever has to take over splinter unit, whoever has to run EPK, that's who we're training for. Yeah, no, it's absolutely right. So. No, um, I am so glad I got to to get into the to the one in in, in LA. And, oh, we so wanted you there. Yeah. I was, so, I was, so, I was, I was hoping. I was like, oh, I hope because I was driving from Austin back here. So because I did a show up there. Um, Adam is uh still in Texas, good old Austin and stuff. That's why if if Texas is definitely um oh are commercials within your realm yes yes it's it's it basically when you go yeah. through a pa boot camp you can it's any kind of set uh commercials the easiest one uh if you if you even can, social media commercials yeah, can you imagine honestly, that if yeah you can survive a indie film you yeah you can you'll be oh. in, in a union uh scripted show you'll be fine elsewhere, yeah. everywhere yeah i always find that very funny when people are like oh well your resume is all features and stuff can you handle a commercial i'm like <laughs> <laughs> what's the difference <laughs> uh <laughs> can i shut up <laughs> yeah and we do that too because we know that the pressure is highest on our bigger features and our bigger series so our pressure is highest on the most high profile shows Correct. Right. Yes. Well, if you can master understanding the highest profile shows, you're fine everywhere else. Then you're fine everywhere else. Yep. Yeah. Then you're fine everywhere else, and you'll be like, "Wow, yeah, commercials. I get paid ten times the amount, and I do what like was? maybe half, maybe not even half of what I am expected to do on a. I moved a cooler. Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah it's always like that um no this is great well i we'll have a sidebar conversation as to how we can get you in in austin and texas and stuff like that if that's um something that you guys want to work uh do again because you yes. guys i mean they really you guys really need to be there um yeah so. i mean we are approaching an hour right now i could yes. we could go on for another 30 45 <laughs> minutes we want you guys no but we want you guys to come back though if if yes. y'all are want wanting to oh, um, are you kidding yeah of course. yeah oh great yeah. awesome maybe yeah. what we'll do we'll make it a regular thing and whenever you have something you're about to push out or another round of yeah um of uh classes are about to start we'll that way you can list out the places that you're going to be and everything. And, and we'll make, we'll figure this out because I, I, I am a strong believer that the best way for us to give back is to teach in this industry. Mm. And sure. Well, I like, I wish I could donate to all the indie go-go's and all that stuff. But like, for me, I think my, my biggest is to be able to give that knowledge to someone so that they can have it, just just a little bit easier in on set you know yeah or, i don't like that whole there's an old brain theory of those who can't do teach but the truth is you're yeah. learning from people who do yes mm. so this doesn't make sense if you're being trained for the job by someone who does the job then how does that old statement ring true i agree I I a hundred percent agree. And the, and the thing is that like, this is all a, it's a mutual thing. Like by, by us teaching 
as well. We're learning about, oh, that's a question. I didn't, we just thought that everybody knew that. Yeah. So that's the, when you're in this industry, you just forget what you didn't know before. <laughs> we thought you knew when you took this job that you could go 10 one in between a setup. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or know what 10 one is. Yeah. <laughs> or know what 10 one is. Or know exactly. what a setup is. Yeah. That exactly. too. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. so. Sorry. We just thought you knew. That yeah, you need hey, to uh, plug in when you get here so that we can talk to you on the radio. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't think you would be staring off into space just on your phone the entire time while everything's happening all around you. You know, you could <laughs> yeah. jump in at any moment, you know. <laughs> we didn't think you'd be hanging out at base camp when every single person on the show seems to be making way oh to God. set when they hear companies in. We didn't actually think you were just going to stay in base camp. We <laughs> thought you would follow everyone else because company was called in and there's no one in base camp. Base camp. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty empty that? here. Where did all the 320 crew go? That's the thing. It's like, that makes me so mad when I'm so stressed out. And I'm like, usually when I'm working art department, I'm like one of the very few people and then I'll go buy like crafty to just get some water. And I'm like just drenched in sweat. And I see like 10 PAs just like posting up, chilling by the camera truck. And I'm just like, I want to, I want to throw all of you into the sun. Why yeah. aren't you coming in here and helping me lift a couch? <laughs> yeah. Why aren't you doing anything other than what you're doing right now? It's horrible. It's, 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 it's let exhausting. Let me get this straight. You're getting paid to stand around the craft service table and have water? Because am I the yes. only one that thinks that like standing around doing, because I've done that a couple of times and I felt useless. Like I felt like stupid. Like I'm like, I need to be doing something. But there's those sets where they're like, Adam, there's nothing you can do. You just, you have to just stand there. And I'm like, I don't want to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like dance. I'm gonna like do, do a show or something. Like I gotta do something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And then, and you can, there's always something that you can do. There's always something to do. Yeah. There's always something to do. So either if you could be reading your sides, you could be picking up trash that's just around you. There you, you. Go. you could be walking up to craft service and saying, Hey, can I have a trash bag? Just so that when I make my way from my lockup to camera, I can pick up trash on the way. Wicked okay. smart. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so thank much you for, so much. for thank coming you for on. What you guys do, honestly. I, I don't know get if that too. Tells yeah. You that enough, but like there needs to be more people who are, who take it upon themselves to try to make set a better place. And, and it takes time to do this, you know, and we know we, I know that we know that this, it takes, it takes time. And it, all of this is, you know, starts from the top and trickles down, but like the people in the bottom are helping each other and stuff like that. And like, how do we make set a better place? So thank you so much yeah. um, for yeah. creating a program like this. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And thank you for coming to camp. Yes, I, I had, I had, it was fun. I was like sitting there, like answering the questions in my head. Yeah, <laughs> while they were doing the name thing and stuff like that. It was, that was yeah. Like, oh no, not that, not that. Yeah. So now it's, um, we take pride in what we do, and uh, so hopefully anybody out there, if you have any thought of going and starting in the industry, you really, really need to check out PA boot camp. Um, yeah. I'm not just saying that I went to a to one, and as an AD, I can say, shoot, if you go through it, like you should, you will come out with it knowing enough stuff that most other PAs who don't go through, and you will probably be one of the people that I immediately can tell and will want to um, have my back and and everything. So, yeah, that's right. And yeah. do you guys have a website that uh, we can plug and all that? Okay. PA bootcamp.com. Yeah, uh, it's straight up. Okay. Yeah. I love that. You can also contact us, PA bootcamp at yahoo.com, PA bootcamp at gmail.com. We got both, awesome. both addresses. And, and really you guys are on social find. media, of course, right? On Instagram and all that. Yeah. We don't have a Facebook page because we don't find a whole lot of professionals going through pay- Facebook page. We find a whole lot of younger generation going really? through Facebook. Yeah. So interesting. Okay. Yeah. We try to stay mostly on Instagram and with Twitter's political status right now, we don't really play with that much. Woof. No, yeah. Twitter's a bad neighborhood. You don't want to go through. Yeah. Right, no. exactly. So we don't go there. <laughs> Instagram. Um, and then Facebook, there's a page. So like if somebody Googles PA Bootcamp, it'll say there's a Facebook page, but we're not active on it. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, because we're going to plug it on the... Uh, I mean, we are streaming on Facebook, but we're going to have the link on the yeah. Instagram uh, stream and also on our podcast stream on yeah. Facebook. So yeah. we're going to link it. We need everybody. Even if you're not looking to become a PA, if you just want to get into the industry, like y'all said from the top, like it's just to give you perspectives on other departments and see where y'all can branch out and stuff. So PA bootcamp.com, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's not, let's not be silly here. Okay. We yeah. train art department PA so that your art department coordinator doesn't have a heart attack. No. And the art directors I work with doesn't feel like they're going to have a panic attack. Yeah. Like yeah. Just, that's what I love. That's what yeah. I love. <laughs> we, we do train them because you know, they need it. Yes, they do. <laughs> And um, is that, is that it, Christine? Okay. Yeah. That and is, also get realisms, it. get realisms, uh, com. pick up your book. I mean, we, we already know this, you know, get, get, get realisms.com, get the book today. PA bootcamp.com, sign it up, join them. Um, it happens third, third weekend of every month. That's our aim. That's but ideally, that's our aim. aim. Yes. Yeah. And I love that aim. And if you guys just want to learn just some film industry stuff, please head on over there. Um, you guys, thank you so much again for being yeah, part of this. You guys, we love it. Chuck Lee, yeah. And you got to well, come back again, you yes, know, I especially, sure. um, I will figure out something, especially Power. what the status is going to be at like post writer's strike, you know, that is imminent, uh, mm -hmm. in May. So, you know, I feel like the industry is going to be a little, a little flip floppy <laughs> later in the year. It never lasts as long as people think it will. But because no. they're like not working on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they're not getting any phone calls, that's the biggest one. No, no phone calls and no cat text. The silence is violent. Yes. Ugh, it's like a bad ex, ex boyfriend or girlfriend. It, yeah, it's like <laughs> the silence kind of freaks you out. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, thank you guys again, and thank you Instagram, thank you Facebook for for joining us, for saying hello. We want more of this. Um, and hopefully next week we'll be back uh, with a new guest. So uh, without further ado, Christine, was there anything else before we go? That's it. Make movies, guys. Make, make movies, movies, make pretend, make art. This is what we do. And pay attention to your PAs. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. just pay attention to them. They're you know only I mean? the lifeblood of a film set. Just They're like only that. the heartbeat, the ner <laughs> the nervous system of the, of the whole set. But you know, uh, uh, your job would know. be a whole lot harder if it wasn't for Sepia. It would be a whole lot harder. It would be a lot more difficult with a bunch of ads too. So yeah, <laughs> I'd rather have that. PAs in you, you my you opinion. You don't want that. You don't yeah, want a no. bunch of ads breathing no. down no. your neck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and ads don't want to do the stuff that Sepia's do. No. no. <laughs> of course not. Are you kidding me? What you you, you think uh, 80s want to staple uh, sides all day? Come on. No, they do not. And no. they don't want to stand on a lockup either. They, oh yeah. You're and you're there for lockup for a while. Um oh, yeah. all right, ladies and gentlemen, all that's right. it. Thank you, Instagram. Thank you, Facebook. We love you. Uh goodbye. That's it. Bye. That's that's all the that's all the podcast we can give you. Thank you, Christine. And uh thank you guys. Uh and that's it. Bow, 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 bow,